All right, 2014 FRQ1, we have this function that's showing us amounts of grass clippings in a bin with units pounds. So how many pounds of grass clippings are in this bin over time? They're decomposing. So the first thing I like to do when I see a function is just make sure I have the units of the function correct. And this function is measured in pounds, where the independent variable is days that have passed. So the other thing I like to do is I look down at A, B, C, and D and see that I'm using A of T in a lot of different ways. I'm going to have to integrate it at one point. I'm going to have to take a derivative of it at one point. So since I'm interacting with it so much, I'm just going to plug it into my calculator as Y1. Y1 equals 6.687 times 0 0.931 raised to the X because your calculator will only recognize X as the independent variable. So we're going to make it X instead of T. And the first part asks us to find the average rate of change over the course of the zero with the day to the 30th day. So what we're going to do is we're going to do a of 30, a of 30 minus a of zero over 30 minus zero. And the easiest way for us to do this, since we have it plugged into our Y1, is to do alpha trace and if alpha trace doesn't work, you might have to look up for your calculator and its operating system how to get to the Y menu. But that should pull up all the Ys. And you can just paste Y1 of 30 and then do it again and do Y1 of 0 and then just hit enter. And then you should divide your answer by 30 minus 0, which is just 30. Okay. So then when you do that, you should get negative 0.197. And then this is in pounds, this is in days, so this is going to be pounds per day. On average, we've lost negative 0.197 pounds per day over the course of 30 days. And it looks like for rounding, they will also accept, accept negative 0.196. Okay. So then, and, and note that if you don't do units, if you do everything else right, but you don't include the units, you get no points for this part of the, of the FRQ. So you need to make sure you include those units. Okay, part B is asking for the derivative of our function A prime. So again, I want to write units down. I know that A is in pounds. The derivative A prime is going to be pounds per day. Remember, average rate of change is just a way of really approximating a derivative. So that's pounds per day as well. So A prime is pounds per day. So all we need to do here to find A prime, and specifically we're looking for A prime 15, is we just go back to our Y1 and we need to do math 8, which is going to pull up D, DX, we're going to plug in the x, d dx, of y1, and then we're going to do that at x equals 15. Alternatively, instead of, if you don't have it plugged in for y1, you could also just plug the function directly in. Instead of y1, you just type out that, or yeah, type out the actual function here, okay? And then that should give us negative 0.164, and then we have to make sure we're doing pounds per day. And then it looks like they'll also accept negative point or negative point one six three as well for rounding. And then it asks us to interpret. So what we have to recognize is that this is the instantaneous rate of change of the amount of clippings in the bin at this exact time. So what we say then is at t equals fifteen, the amount of grass clippings. is decreasing, decreasing because our derivative is negative, at 0.164 pounds every day. That's the instantaneous rate of change of the amount of clippings in the bin. Okay, part C is asking for when is A of t, our function, equal to the average amount of clippings in the bin? So over the course of, on day zero, we have a certain amount of clippings. On day 30, we have a certain amount of clippings. Over that 30 days, there is some kind of average amount that was in the bin, right? What we want to know is when is Y1 exactly equal to that average amount? So what we're going to do is in Y2, we're going to plug in the average amount. And for this, we have to use the average value theorem. So the average value of a function is going to be equal to the integral from 0 to 30 of the function, right, and then we have to make sure we do a dx, right? And then we divide by uh, the change in the interval. So we, we went from 0 to 30, so that's a change of 30. This is going to represent the average amounts of y1, 
All right. Now, how do we get this integral? How do we get this piece? Okay, in our calculator, that would be math 9. We'll pull up the integration. Okay, so we are going to integrate from 0 to 30, y1, divided by 30. That'll give us the average value. And then once again, we want to find out where do these intersect. So we're going to have to hit graph and then do the intersect feature. So make sure you're really careful with how you plug this in. Make sure that uh, you have it plugged in exactly correctly. Make sure you have your y1, graph and intersect. And then we'll find out that it happens at t equals 12.415 days. So a little bit into the 12th day, the amount in the bin is exactly equal to the average amount over the course of the 30 days. And you really need to make sure you show your work here because you get one point for just knowing what the average value theorem is. So you need to make sure you write everything down, everything you're putting in your calculator, write it down, and then make sure you write down your final answer. Okay, last one. So now it's saying after 30 days, the grass is decomposing in such a way that it's more linear and it's just going to follow the trend of the tangent line at t equals 30. So first we have to create our tangent line at t equals 30. So again, as always, we should write down y minus y1 equals m times x minus x1. Okay, and we know what x1 is, and, and let's let's change it to uh, let's change it to t values, sure, because we're really using t t as our independent variable here. So it's going to be t minus t1. Okay, so our t value is t equals 30 because that's where our line is. That's where the tangent line is happening, and then we also know that y1 is just going to be the output at 30. So that's going to be a of 30. So now we can write this as y minus a of 30 equals. Okay, what is m going to be? It's going to be the slope at 30, which is just going to be a prime 30 times t minus 30. Okay, so we need to fill these values in. I'm going to say to avoid rounding errors, we should find out what a of 30 and a prime 30 are and then store them in our calculator. So a of 30 equals and we just need to plug this directly into our function. That's going to be equal to 0.782928. And then you should stow that, stow button, as let's do alpha A. And then A prime 30, which uh, again, you just do uh, ddx of y1 at x equals 30, right, of the original function x equals 30. Okay, that's going to be negative point zero five five nine seven six okay cool so then just we should store that as another letter store it as alpha b or something right and make sure that we're writing that down so that they know how we're how we're defining our a of 30 and a prime 30 so now we have y minus a of 30 which is y minus alpha a equals, and then our slope is alpha b times t minus 30, right? So then we can write this as y equals b times t minus 30 plus alpha a. This is our tangent line in y equals form, right? And then we need to figure out when this is equal to 0.5 because it's asking this to approximate when there's 0.5 pounds left. So almost done. We're going to go up here. All right, we already have our y1 plugged in. That was our a function, right? Okay. y2 was the average value from earlier, but we can just replace this now with our tangent line. So let's replace it with b times t minus 30 plus a, okay? And in fact, uh, we are going to turn off so you should see that these two are highlighted, right? The two equal sign are highlighted. If you scroll over this equal sign and hit enter, that's going to not graph this, which is good because we don't want to graph this right now. We only want to graph this one. And then on our y3, we're going to plug in 0.5. These are the two we're interested in. And then we're going to find out, we're going to graph, and we're going to find out where they intersect. And then that's going to end up happening at t equals 35.054. All right, that's it.